Hi everyone, this is Joel here, and I'm going to talk to you today about a feature of Minecraft EDU that we are calling World Templates. So I'm going to get my Minecraft EDU server tool over here, and this is where I can start a new world or, or load a saved world that I've worked on previously, uh, or even launch our tutorial world. But what I'm going to show you today that's new is a World Template. So World Templates are just really our name for uh, sort of any kind of saved lesson or activity um, or anything that you want to do with a class or or with your kids at home indeed uh, that it's it, and it's a template you can download these online other teachers can create them people can share them and you can load it up you can load up multiple templates one for each class uh, it's it's uh, there's a lot of versatility in what you can do and uh, th this whole interface is very temporary we're going to come up with a much more robust way to uh, sort through different templates, uh, find activities, they're going to be tagged and rated and people can comment on them, that kind of thing. But for right now, uh, you know, we have a number of different types of uh, activities loaded up here and I'm just going to give you a sample of a couple of them just to give you an idea of some of the things you can start to do with Minecraft EDU. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is uh, from our environmental section here. This is actually more of a, a sort of a team building and collaboration and problem solving map. But it's, it's, it's wrapped up in an environmental, uh, with an environmental message. So I'm going to say start the server with this template. Here we go. So uh, now that the server is running, uh, I can go through, I can hear some information. I can see uh, with the IP that the server is running on and there's instructions for how to, how to get my class connected. I can go through, I can change some of the settings if I want. Uh, you know, for example, I can make it so that uh, the day and night uh, will cycle and that we can have different weather effects. But uh, let's, let's just jump right into the game. I'm going to get Minecraft going here. And I will say that I'm a teacher. Type in my password. And I entered the game here in this underground bunker. And uh, through... Uh, a number of signs and these uh, information blocks uh, right over here. The the students start to un unravel the story and figure out what's uh, what's what's going on in, in this uh, world they've entered. So uh, I'll I'll just uh, summarize for you. I won't read all the blocks. Uh, they they learn that they've been asleep for 200 years. They are in whoops. They're in a uh, safe bunker underneath the surface of Mount. Uh, underneath the summit of Mount Everest and that some sort of ecological catastrophe has happened up above and they are told that it should be safe to return to the surface and explore and examine and figure out try to figure out what's going on and what they can do to help they also learn that most of the rest of humanity has been evacuated off of the planet in these giant spaceships so uh, they work their way up and uh, they're told to to come to the surface here let me um, gonna put myself in creative mode and speed myself up just so I can uh, move this along a little bit and they come out of this cave and right away they see some strange sights and they don't know what that's about quite yet but uh, as they they come out and explore they see uh, they are indeed on uh, Mount Everest there's the summit there and if we look around a little bit uh, we'll see that this is one of the only spots of dry land left on the planet. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a water world here. So, uh, you know, there, I, I, I leave clues that, that prompt them what to do next, but it's really up to their own ingenuity to, to figure out what's really going on and what their, what their tasks need to be. They can, uh, make their way to this, uh, abandoned science station here and there's some more clues to read. There's a journal of a, of a doctor that was uh, left be behind here. And uh, what they end up piecing together is that, let me turn my movement speed back to normal here, that, um, you know, the, the, the environment, the ecology of the planet has really been devastated. You'll notice there's no grass, there's no plant life left on Mount Everest, and that the only way that humans, the humans out in space will return to the planet is if uh, they can kind of kickstart uh, the ecology going again and re-green the Earth. Uh, and they need to discover how to do that. And then once they do that, 
there is this uh, rocket ship. They need to uh, mine up iron blocks and uh, fill in the outline of this rocket ship and also find uh, enough fuel in order to launch the rocket um, in order to signal the humans out in space. And in order to get the planet green again, they have to start planting trees. And they'll notice there's a little bit of green left. And if they come down into the secret cave, what they find is very mysterious. They find the last tree left on planet Earth. Uh, so what they what they figure out they need to do is harvest the tree. They get saplings from the trees and um, uh, they have to replant the trees. And then from the, those few seed, seedling trees, they can get more saplings and, and keep going. But now here's the interesting thing. I've modified this world. Here, you know what? Let me... Um, let me go into build mode just so I can move around a little more quickly and easily. Um, here in build mode, you can go right through solid rock, so I will do that. Um, and here, let me just make a day so so we can see. Um, so now I've modified this world. In the, in the fiction of the, the story, humans have used up all the natural resources. There's actually no coal or any other way to, uh, to use a furnace in uh, in the map at the beginning. So they are told that they need to make iron blocks to sort of make a symbolic representation of this, uh, this rocket ship that they're supposed to launch. But if you're a Minecraft player, you know that you need to put raw iron ore into a furnace in order to be able to smelt it into iron ingots, which lets you make the blocks. So what the students uh, have to realize is that the only way to smelt those iron blocks are to cut down the trees that they are planting um, in order to burn the, the wood in the furnace. Now, this right away creates a tension. They have an, an ecological goal, an environmental goal of replanting all these trees, but of course, um, they need that very same resource in order to meet their industrial goal, which is to launch the spaceship. So, you know, I, I've done this map a couple times with uh, two different classes uh, with different age groups, and there's been some really fascinating conversations that have, have sparked from this about about finding the balance, about being able to, to balance the, the, the needs of, of industry and society and progress with uh, the, uh, ecology. And so I was really happy with this, how this came out. So anyway, I'm going to disconnect uh, from from this server. That's just a taste. There's actually a lot more hidden stuff and, and things uh, to explore and find in this map. Um, but I'm gonna go back to my server. I'm actually gonna stop the server. And I just wanna show you another type of map, a very different map uh, that, that you can uh, get as a world template. So here we are back at the server tool. I'll choose world template again. And this time I'm going to show you a map that I didn't create. This was created by uh, Eric Walker, who is a, a humanities teacher actually in Kuwait. Um, and he made this just awesome, expansive world uh, for his humanities students to play uh, remotely from home. Uh, but still using uh, Minecraft EDU software. So let's start this server. Here we go. And I'll go back in the game. I'll connect to the local server again. And so the, the students start in a uh, kind of a safe house uh, with uh, there's some information to read and uh, they sort of uh, <laughs> lag, it stinks. Uh, yeah, because as, as I said, the students are playing from home. Uh, there, there's lots of tips and, and ways to get started and uh, instructions for what to do. And let me tell you, this world is enormous. Eric has put in an incredible amount of time and put in such amazing details in this world. So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use my, uh, my teacher powers a bit. And let's go into a build mode again. Go right through the roof here. And, you know, y you just start exploring. I hope I'm going in the right direction here. And it it's just an amazing world uh, filled with all of these landmarks and uh, historically significant places and, and sort of instructional activities uh, from all these different classical worlds. I believe this is... Uh, uh, is this the Parthenon? No, I don't think so. 
Um, but it's a it's a Greek inspired building, and it's uh, peppered with all sorts of information and and things to find. Um, it, it just the the attention to detail is just unbelievable, and I think if, as we uh, uh, look around, we can find some activity. So as as the students begin to learn about uh, Greek history and Greek architecture, there's a couple different building areas. You see these green circles; these are places where students in this map are allowed to build, and they're they're told to build their own academies, to build their own schools. Uh, I think in this example, out of in these locations. So let's see what else we can find. I'm not even sure what this is. What is this? Ooh, the Caves of Wonder, you know? Ready to go Spelunky. We'll put on your Spelunking hat. Uh, all right, okay. I'll, I'll game. I'm game. It's cool. See, I, I've been playing around with this map for weeks, and I haven't even <laughs> come across this place. It's so cool. Um, wow. Eric is just amazing um very cool very cool all right well now that i'm lost underground uh so you can see there's also some uh some fantastical elements to this map but so rather than just wandering around aimlessly i'm going to use uh minecraft edu's uh teleport teleportation system here and and go to some of these teleport stations that eric has uh embedded into the map uh, so I went to ancient China here, and we can see some examples of Chinese architecture and learn a little bit more about the culture there. Um, you know, and just everywhere you go, there's uh, there are these uh, um, sort of either colorful elements or historical details that that have been put in into this map. Uh, let's see where else. Uh, so it's ancient China. We got more pages. Rome. Why not? Let's go to Rome. Uh, <laughs> SPQ are excellent. So right, so we go to Rome, of course, aqueducts. We got a we got a little bazaar there, a market. Um, now I think he does have a Colosseum somewhere. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen that before. Maybe it's not in this location. But I believe there's a, a coliseum where he's actually set it up so the the students can invade, uh, engage in a little bit of uh, combat competition, have a spleef tournament. If you uh, know Minecraft, you know what that that's about. Um, maybe I'll just go to one more location here. Uh, Babylon fairy tale forest, obviously more uh, more fantastical elements. Let's go to Babylon. Um, let's see. The world's just loading. I'm not on the uh, fastest computer here, so it's uh, my uh, the server's having a little trouble loading all these areas. Oh, this is just so cool. <laughs> uh, I wonder if these are supposed to be the hanging gardens or something. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I mean, you you could do a whole semester in this world. Uh, you know, the students could go in and out of these different areas, and you could uh, go back and forth in and out of the game with supplementary materials, and uh, just sort of really s use the uh, the game as a way to to just soak in the flavor of the world. And you can, uh, you know, and of course you can edit this yourself if you're a teacher and you've got ideas. You can take this map and you can uh, expand it and go from there. Um, I I should probably mention that I don't think that Eric created everything in this map himself. I believe he. Uh, went online and found schematic files of other historical buildings that other other people had made and and copied and pasted them into his map. But that's something you can do. I mean, that's uh, uh, I I just think uh, more more credit to to Eric for for doing that. And if you go into the map files, he does give credit for uh, everyone's creations. Um, you know, in the world of academics, attribution is uh, is very important. Uh, so, all right, I'm going to disconnect, and I'm just going to show you very quickly one more map just to, to give you an idea of a different type of uh, activity you could do uh, with a world template. So the, the two I showed you so far were worlds that were... Um, you know, sort of lesson plans that were already kind of in place, uh, already... Um, sort of laid out, mapped out what uh, what a teacher was supposed to do with their class. But what we also want to do with world per, uh, templates is to provide a number of just sort of uh, basic maps, sort of uh, locations and uh, 
um, just uh, just uh, places where other types of gameplay could happen. So I'm gonna join this server, and I'll just see. This is a uh, this is a map I made here. Let me make it. Uh, let me make it daytime. Uh, here's a map I made uh, for different group projects. And most recently, I had all of my second grade. All of my second grade classes, I teach 10 different sections of uh, second grade, and I wanted them all for the first time to build in the same world. Uh, but I wanted to start them all off separately before I had them all intermingling. So what I did was uh, I created this, uh, this map, and I've given each class, each section, each second grade group, their own their own area. You know what, here, let's, uh, I'm gonna use some of my keyboard shortcuts here and uh, go into build mode. I will go nice and fast. So as we go around, there's a central section. So each each class has its own area. And uh, you know, what I told them what to do was to each start building uh, a different, a different uh, city building. So some of them build hospitals and schools and police stations and zoos and aquariums and theme parks. It was it was it was very cute. Um, but you know the idea is this is a world template. You don't have to do it this way. You could do this uh, with anything where you wanted to divide up students into different areas. You could have one student go to each group and uh, do a farming unit or start working with redstone and try to figure out their own building assignments. Um, and you know you of course have the flexibility to. Uh, uh, remove the borders. Oh, I should mention that these uh, these special blocks are border blocks. Uh, teachers can fly and and uh, jump right over them, but students cannot. Students will be uh, stopped at the border. So what I did with my second graders is once once each group of ten kids each had created their buildings, had created their uh, their city buildings, then I removed the walls and I let the kids start. Uh, intermingling and exploring each other's creations. What we're hoping is teachers out there, uh, or, or not, they don't have to be teachers, anybody out there with an idea of something that might serve sort of an educational or just fun purpose uh, will create these templates and 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 share them with other people and then uh, you know they can be used in a variety of different ways you can uh, play it as the creator intended and follow their lesson plans and use whatever supporting materials they have or take it in your own direction and do your own thing so um, I guess that's it for now I hope you see this system will uh, allow for a lot of cross-pollination of ideas and uh, you know we can't wait to see what people create with this so thanks for watching